is up everyone welcome to fuzzy's action reaction videos guys you are rocking it here with the one and only jay fuzzy in the house welcome welcome so we are coming back for chapter two of uh yesterday's uh video so today i'll be talking more about my um past experiences of uh, my dark history uh, of course so we'll be continuing from where my addiction had started so without further ado let's get into the video let's go so continuing on to yesterday's video like i had said um now what am i going to do you know uh, that expression alone was more for me to say you know now that i'm dealing with not only my anxiety and depression it's like I've got a drug addiction on top of all things. So without even me realizing this, I was actually heading towards a long, long, long dark road to hell. Uh, having a heroin addiction is, is one of the hardest things to kick and I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I was about to find out. So here I am dealing with all this pressure that, that I've put on myself and it was only gonna to get tougher from here on and uh, I can't explain exactly uh, how I actually got myself into that situation because I, I just did. Uh, I, I was a fool to have, have thought that that was my only solution to deal with this illness and you know, it's just, I wish I had better services. I wish I knew, but the more important thing is that I wish I had spoken up about my, yeah, serious um, mental illness. But I can only blame myself as I have for so many years for a lot of things, but this situation here alone is only my fault and I can clearly say in all honesty that this is my fault because I made that choice so you know it's like that saying you made your bed now you gotta lie in it so I started this addiction at the age of 20 and I have been on a long battle back and forth getting clean, using again, getting clean, slipping up, using again. And um, I've been battling with that for 17 years. Uh, 17 years. And I turned 40 in, in six days. Can you believe that? <laughs> 40 years old in six days and it's taken me 17 years to finally snap out of it and say what the hell am I doing so I've been going back and forth on myself battling this addiction battling this mental illness my anxiety and depression for 17 long years for me to say enough is enough. If I continue on, I can guarantee you now I would not be sitting here talking to you guys at all. And in saying that, I wouldn't be here, period, in life. I was pretty close to to ending that life several times and that's the most sickening thing about having this addiction grab a hold of you because when it really has a hold on you to the point where it does not want to let go then you're in some trouble and at that point I felt like 
when I was going through my withdrawal moments, I just wanted to kill myself. Every time I attempted to get clean, I just wanted to kill myself. I didn't want to live anymore. The pain was so excruciating, I just couldn't deal with it. Withdrawing through all that pain, I just, I didn't feel like I deserved to live. I felt like I had no purpose to be here. You know, but how selfish is that of me to leave my family with that problem, to deal with having a son that just took his own life because he was so selfish to not even get help or ask for help. Especially when I could have gotten it. So I have a very huge family and yeah, a lot of brothers and a sister and we're a very close, tight-knit family and I love them very much and very dearly, you know, but it wasn't always the best uh, of uh, family times growing up in my situation, uh, especially because I hadn't opened up about my my problem, my issue of um, throughout my mental illness and um, and having to battle with that. And because of that, you know, uh, I've always been so closed in and I never really felt like an older brother, you know, having brothers that were a lot larger than I was. You know, I used to call myself, you know, the, the shit end of the stick and, <laughs> I know it doesn't sound nice, but I, I used to I used to call myself all sorts of names. Like, you know, I was I was the loser of the family. I was the hopeless one. I felt like I was the more adopted one, or you know. And and this is coming from an older brother. You know, it just it, it, this is this is the this is the thing I was saying earlier about how your mental illness can really play you know, tricks with your mind and make you believe things that don't even exist. And I was believing everything I always thought of myself as, and that was really tough. And, and it's a lot of the reason why that throughout my addiction had led me to suicide. It's hard to talk about times that I've wanted to end my life, but I'm trying to get my story out there because there are people out there in this world that are struggling and dealing with the same problem that I had in the past. And we can't keep living like this, thinking that the solution is just to get rid of ourselves because it isn't. There's so many other better solutions out there, you know, where you can save your life and, and continue on to be able to live a better day and tell your story like I am today. You know, I've had to really pull myself out of the darkness with this and the addiction side of things and dealing with the issue of not being able to open up with to my family and and I can see how tough that would have been for my family to deal with that also because it would have made them feel like that I didn't trust them when that wasn't the case. And I know that can be hard for them but this was something I thought and this is what I thought that I had under control that I could deal with this on my own and try and and battle with it you know and doing that under the table where i felt like if i could just
pull this together and nobody will find out and I wouldn't be judged, but that wasn't the case. I had to find out the hard way. And not only finding out the hard way, I had to deal with it the hard way. So, in saying that, I had to live my life feeling like I didn't deserve to have that family. I lived life thinking that, and for so long, thinking that, you know, my family made a mistake with me, having me. I've had to live with it for so long, believing in that I was not meant to be a part of that family. And this was the part where I felt like I was so alone. And that was the hardest part for me to, to deal with. I felt like I had no one. I felt like I didn't deserve to be with my family. I felt like everything that I was doing was not part of the family tradition or culture. Or Sorry guys, I just had to pull myself together and so I can continue on with um, my story. So. Back to where I, I, I was saying, you know, my family had done absolutely nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. And I felt like I had put them through so much hell with everything that I was going through and just shut myself down and bottling everything up for so many years. And I could have prevented all that if I had just spoke up and just told him that I am suffering through anxiety and depression. And when I say that, I found it difficult to deal with being in bigger crowds, which I've only just started to learn to be able to adapt to that. You know, and that's a massive change for me. And being incarcerated for such a long period of time really didn't help, you know, with being so institutionalized that my routines in prison had actually followed me home and affected me by living the same way as I was inside uh, out here and that made it harder for me to integrate back into the community which is something that I will speak to you guys about in the next chapter. You know, uh, I would always blame myself for any problems that my, my family would go through and and any issues that the with the family falling apart and anything that would sort of fall apart I'd always put myself first at fault not to say that they would blame me for it but this was me in my own mind blaming myself for anything that would go wrong uh, in my family so I want to apologize and say and I do want to say sorry to my family that are watching. Um, you know, I never meant to put you through all of that hell. And I can promise you now that things can only get better from here on forth. Because the first step to building that strong relationship back with my family again is the change that I've made today. Being able to sit here and, and tell my story with everything that I had been through and and my issues and all my problems and telling you guys and the world how I battle myself out of it. 
That's a massive achievement on my end. That is a huge achievement on my end. And to be able to sit here confidently telling a whole group of people I don't even know to build on my confidence, to, for me to work on my own confidence, man, I could only see that my family would be proud of me now. So for, for my family that are watching, I just want to say I love you guys very much and I hope to see you guys soon. So that comes to the end of the video guys. I'm going to leave it there uh, for now and continue on with the, the other two chapters, the last two chapters tomorrow. So make sure you guys hit the bell notification if you haven't. So the people that have subscribed don't miss out on chapter three uh, which will be due tomorrow afternoon uh, with the next two chapters. Uh, also um, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification uh, also. So to make up for this uh, sad and emotional video, uh, make sure you tune in because I'll be doing a, a reaction video next uh, just to pick things up a bit and move things to a more of a you know, higher positive sort of uh, mood. <laughs> Until the next video guys, adios.